Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. We've had a few of you viewers ask us questions about spot tacking or just tacking in general. And there's several types of tacks, so I just want to show you a few of them today. Now, you know, generally speaking, you can take two pieces of metal and you can see it and you can tack weld. Whether you use filler or don't use filler, it's not an issue. But every once in a while, you get lap welds. You get lap welds like this, and you don't want to put a lot of heat into your sheet metal, so you'd like to be able to just punch through and create a tack weld. So that's what I did right here. I overlapped a couple of pieces of metal and ran my foot control up to about 125, 130 amps. And let's see what kind of results I got. Well, I failed. And if you take a look here, you know, the puddle was created and it, it punched through the first piece real well. But by the time it got to the second piece, it just didn't have enough energy and it didn't create a puddle. So the two materials didn't take. So very common, very common mistake. Now you could add more heat to it and eventually get there. But the problem is if you add more heat, now you're going to get distortion in your metal. So I want to identify a couple of techniques that I like to use. You know, one of them is if you're going to do this, go ahead, go ahead and drill a little 1 16th hole. And then right where you have the hole and you lay another piece underneath, I'll be able to punch into that and I'll create a nice little tack. Now, it's not going to have a huge amount of strength, but you got to take a look and see what your, your purpose of the tack is. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this is nothing more than a spot tack. I'm going to increase my amps to uh, maybe 100, 125. Uh, <clears throat> hold it there just for a few seconds. May swirl it just a little bit uh, and then back off. I'm not going to use filler material on this, but the key is the size of the hole. So what I need to do is make sure that I set these materials down flat but you just need to be able to hold it down. Hold it down next to where you're getting ready to attack. So uh, I'll go ahead and turn my machine on, get it set, and start on tack number one. And then I'll do tack number two, number three, and we'll see what the results are. Okay, I've got 16 gauge steel. I've got it overlapped. The top plate has three drilled holes. They're only 1 16th in diameter. So now the key to this is I've, I've got to hold the two plates together, just like a tight sandwich. So I'm going to go ahead and put pressure on it, make one tack, hold it there for a few seconds. I'm going to index over, make the second tack, and then make the third, and then we'll stop and see what the results are. Okay, uh, I ramped it up to about 125 amps. Okay, I'm holding the post flow argon on it. I'm going to go ahead and index over to the next one. And I'm going to light the arc. I'm right in the middle of the hole. Didn't even have to oscillate. Hold it there, dwell for just a couple of seconds. I'm going to taper off with my foot control. And the second tack is done. Move over here, and let's do the third one. Right in the center of the hole. I'm not adding any filler material whatsoever. I'm going to ramp up and watch it bubble. It'll penetrate. And I'm going to back off and hold my post flow here. I'm going to hold post flow here for about five seconds. Okay. okay, what I did was I held pressure, started the arc, you can see the puddle, give it just a few seconds so it'll sink into the bottom plate. And I'm going to take this plate, first visual it, and notice that I've got so very little distortion. And that is one of the reasons for doing this, is you don't have a lot of distortion. Now I look at the back side, and I've got heat marks, and here I am, I'm trying to figure out whether it penetrated, and it did. It's got a couple of little, little uh, centimeters of spot, actual liquid puddle that made it to the bottom plate. Okay, so take a look at this. And if you're really, really concerned about it, dwell just a little bit longer. Dwell for four seconds, five seconds, and you'll see the puddle actually come out the backside. So 
That's one technique. Again, it's a 1 16th diameter. You can do that with any metals. You can do it with steel, stainless steel, um, aluminum, do the same thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into more of a significant uh, type of attack weld. And you'll hear this term every once in a while. It's called a rosette weld. And the difference is, <clears throat> now I drilled this out to about a quarter of an inch. And you'll see there's some burrs on here, but it's steel, so I'm going to actually burn those down. And it really, once you put this on another plate, you can see the backside. So you can decide whether you're going to use filler material or not. Uh, so I'm going to do both. I'm going to do one without filler material, and then I'm going to add filler on, on probably two of them. So uh, again, I'm going to tack it. I'm going to hold pressure on it. If you allow the bottom plate to separate at all, you're going to have a problem. So make sure you're making intimate contact, put a lot of pressure on, tack it. Then you can do your weld. So that's what we're going to do. You know, the, uh, the beauty of this type of a rosette weld is you can see the back side and uh, you can see if you're melting or not. So I'm going uh, to go ahead and weld this one totally autogenous, adding no filler whatsoever. Again, you can see it, you can see it bubble a little bit. That's, that's the nature of the beast with steel. And I just make a circle. And you know what, you can circle a second time if you want. And I'm just going to phase out. So I'm backing off on my foot control. Okay, an awful lot of rust in this. So let's try the second tack. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it without filler. You know, I mean it's going to have decent strength to it. Now this, this part, this part actually welded a lot cleaner. I don't have much rust in this area. So I'm going to finish the weld here. And you can see that it goes fairly quick. And now this is the uh, the third tack, or the third rosette weld. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to uh, I'm going to add a little bit of filler material along the way. It takes a little bit longer, but you can see as I add the filler, it does clean up considerably. See the dab, 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 and that's just a technique you've got to get used to. And uh, so there it is, and that filler did exactly what it was supposed to. It cleaned up the metal. Okay, so, and I'm done. Okay, so let me let me recap this. This particular plate is a rosette weld. I got three wells. Now the first one that I welded, uh, it was pretty dirty. It had a lot of rust, a lot of crud and corruption in there. Now it's still gonna have some strength to it, but you could see that it had porosity trying to bubble out. And I get to another area, I did the same thing, just a different area, and it welded a little bit cleaner. And then finally, I added filler material to it. So as we had talked earlier on a couple of different episodes, when you add filler material, it's amazing how your puddle will clean up. And in this particular case, you don't see any porosity. It uh, actually deoxidized, it cleaned, and uh, it's, it's a nice, clean rosette weld. So you can see that there's more heat put in. There's still not much distortion at all. So now when you start comparing this is just a little spot or attack weld. And the one right here is a rosette weld. Hey, thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.